Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is distribute candies in a binary tree and it is a hard level problem. So I was not able to upload the video in the morning, that is why it is so late. But uh, I read the problem and uh, felt that this was an interesting problem. That is why I wanted to share this uh, video with all of you. So the problem basically says that we have been given a binary tree with n nodes, right? And uh, there is exactly one candy for each node, right? But those candies are distributed. So for example, in this particular tree, there are three nodes and uh, there are three candies in the tree in total, right? But they are all with this particular root node. So in one operation, what we can do is we can select any two adjacent nodes and then we can transfer one candy among them. And we have to tell the total number of moves required to make sure that each node has exactly one candy. So this is our whole problem. Now uh, let us see how we can solve this particular problem. So again I am explaining, let us say this is node and this is node, this is node and a tree is like this. Now for example, in this particular case there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nodes. So there will be total of 5 candies inside the tree, right. We are not sure where, where they are but uh, they will be distributed among these nodes. So for example, let us say 3 are here and 1 is here and uh, let us say 1 is here, right. So this is how the candies might be distributed. The total number of candies will always be equal to 5 so that there are exactly 1 candy for each node. Now uh, let us say in one move what we can do is we can select these two nodes, this node and this node and make a transfer among them. If I make a transfer, so this will be reduced to 2 and 1 will go here, right. So this is how the whole problem works. Now since there are, there are only uh, n candies for n nodes n candies for n nodes, this uh, like this particular statement really helps us because it will help us determine what is the number of candies that should be present inside any subtree. So let us say I have a node like this and I have some nodes on the left subtree, right. So there will be some nodes, I am not drawing all of them and there will be some nodes on the right subtree, right. Let us say there are x nodes on the left subtree and y nodes on the right subtree. So now let us say, let us note uh, C1 that is the number of candies in the left subtree and C2 be the number of candies in the right subtree. Now let us say in the left subtree, in the left subtree, if the number of candies, if the number of candies is greater than the number of nodes, let us say C1 is greater than X, right. This simply denotes that this particular subtree has more number of candies than it should have and it should be passing some candies to the parent, right. This is one of the observations. Similarly, for this particular node, if this particular number C2, that is the number of candies in the right subtree is greater than Y, that means this node has some candies that needs to be passed to the parent, right. Similarly, if the left subtree has less number of uh, candies, let us say C1 is less than X, that means it needs some more candies from this particular node and let us say in the right subtree, if this C2 is less than Y, that means it needs some candies from this node, right. So these are some uh, things that we are observing depending only on the fact that all uh, node, that all, all, that there are exactly N candies for N nodes, right. So let us say, let C1 denote the number of candies in left subtree and X denote the size of subtree. Now case 1, uh, let us say C1 is greater than X, that means the, so this means the left subtree has more candies and it should give some to its parent, right. Now case 2 should be C1 is less than X, this means the left subtree has less candies and it should get some from its parent, right. So this is what we are observing. Now let us say we denote these two different operations and what we are going to do is we are going to perform one of these operations. Case 3 can also be case 3 will be when C1 is equal to X. Now in this particular case what we can try to do is 
make no changes make no changes because the subtree has sufficient candies right so this is what we are trying to do now uh, our case for both the left and the right subtrees will fall exactly in one of these three cases and then we will have to make a choice what we want to do either give the candy or take the candy both of them will take exactly the same number of operations so as you can see let us say in this particular case the left subtree has more candies so what it will essentially do is it will give some candies to its parent and that extra candies will be added to my answer right similarly the case can be when this particular node has to give some candies to its child and this that extra value will be added to my answer. So this is exactly what we have to do in the whole code. Now if I show you my code, I actually implemented it in a little different manner but we are going to modify it according to our needs. So uh, let us say the first subtree, this is the first DFS and uh, in this particular DFS I am doing nothing, I am just marking the subtree of each node as 1 and candies of node as the number of the value present at that particular node. Then I am calling the DFS in both in the left and the right subtree and I am adding the answer of the left subtree and the right subtree to the current subtree. Similarly, I do for the candies. So, this is just a basic DFS call to initialize my subtree of nodes and my candies of nodes. This will help me to like uh, visualize what are the number of candies in a particular subtree and what are the total number of nodes in a particular subtree. Now I have this DFS2 call, now I will again I am seeing it, I implemented it in a little different manner but uh, let us say, let us say we just modify it to our needs. So what we are going to do is, we are just going to discuss the exact same thing that we had in the explanation. So let me remove this extra part. Now I have this variable left extra and this variable right extra. What I am trying to say is, I am doing candies of left subtree minus the number of nodes of left subtree. So let us say if this value is negative, this means it is deficient, it is deficient. If this value is positive, it this means it, it has more candies, right. So, in either of the cases, we will have to perform sufficient number of uh, operations for all of those candies. So, if I just try to simplify this, I can easily remove all of this. Now, what I have to do is answer plus is equal to absolute of left extra plus absolute of right extra. Right. So, it can be also extra number of candies or it can be also uh, like uh, what do you say deficient number of candies that means it has less candies. In both of the cases, I will have to add that particular operations to my answer right that is why I took absolute of both left extra and absolute of right extra so that uh, even if it is less we or we are going to perform the same number of operations. So for example, if candies of i is less than the subtree of node then this left extra value will be negative but I still want to perform the absolute value of that particular negative value, right. So those will be the total number of operations, then I can call my DFS2 on node left as well as my DFS2 on node right, right. So in each of these cases for each of these nodes, these will be the extra number of operations that is that we will have to perform. Now again I am saying this that this value can be negative sometimes it just indicates that the left subtree has less number of candies and more number of nodes. If this value is positive it just means it has more candies and less number of nodes. In both of the cases we will have to perform those many number of operations that is why I have took the absolute value of both of them right. So let me just compile this first and uh, just to make sure that we do not make any errors right. So this works and if I just submit it. So you see this passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct. The key idea was that there will be n candies for each of the n nodes. So we just have to find out how many candies need to exchange between the current node and the child node, right. So that is it for this particular video. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys said then consider dropping the like on this video and do not forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye bye.